welcome back to SOS and Brain Hub and in this video I'll be taking you through the visual pathway. So let's have a start by having a look at the cross section of the human eye. As light passes through the eye it first reaches the cornea. The cornea is the transparent covering over the iris, pupil and the anterior chamber. The cornea works with the lens to focus light through the eye. The retina is the inner coat of the eye that contains lots of photoreceptors known as rods and cones. The cornea and the lens focuses the light onto the back of the retina which creates a visual image on the retina. The visual image is inverted from top to bottom and reversed from left to right. So if we have the letter R in the visual field, this would appear inverted and reversed. So if we have a visual field with four quadrants labelled A, B, C and D, due to the refraction of light through the eye, these quadrants would be labelled D, C, B and A in the retinal field. Now this will become important later on as the fibres from each of the, re each of the retinal field quadrants will become separated. The centre of the visual field projects this image onto the vivae of the retina which is found at the centre of this region here, which is known as the macula. Now the fovea has a very high density concentration of cone cells, which allows for an especially high visual acuity. The neurons from the retina that are carrying this visual information eventually converge to form the optic nerve. The convergence occurs at the optic disc, but at the optic disc there aren't any photoreceptors, so this results in a blind spot within our vision. Now the blind spot doesn't appear as a black dot, but simply a region in our visual field where we can't obtain visual information. The optic nerve then leaves the orbit via the optic canal before reaching the optic chiasm. Here we have the optic nerve, and here we have the optic chiasm. The optic chiasm is found immediately superior to the pituitary gland, which is located within the cella tusca, but also immediately inferior to the hypothalamus. From the optic chiasm, fibres then travel via the optic tracts towards the lateral geniculate nuclei. An important thing to note about the optic chiasm is that neurons that originate from the nasal retinal fields of both eyes, demonstrated here by the red lines, decussate at the optic chiasm to the contralateral side, before synapsing at the lateral geniculate nucleus, whereas neurons that originate from the temporal retinal fields will remain on the ipsilateral side and synapse on the corresponding ipsilateral lateral geniculate nucleus and do not cross the, at the optic chiasm. Now this is important when it comes to lesions such as a pituitary tumour. If we were to have a patient who had a large pituitary tumour which is found just inferior to the optic chiasm, this would compress the optic chiasm and more specifically the neurons that have originated from the nasal retinal fields, which carry in visual information from the temporal visual fields. So therefore in our patient who has a large pituitary tumour the individual will lose vision in their temporal visual fields. And this is known as bitemporal or bilateral hemianopia. Here we can demonstrate this by drawing a black line cutting through the neurons that are carrying visual information from the nasal retinal fields. So the lateral geniculate nuclei are the primary relay nuclei for visual processing. So now let's look more specifically at the left lateral geniculate nucleus. The left lateral geniculate nucleus will receive temporal retinal infield information from the left eye, which is demonstrated by the green line and does not decussate at the optic chiasm, but then it will also receive information from the nasal retinal field of the right eye, which will cross, which will cross the optic chiasm to the lateral geniculate, left lateral geniculate nucleus. So therefore the left lateral geniculate nucleus is receiving information from the right visual field of both eyes. 
This will be vice versa for the right lateral geniculate nucleus, which will receive information from the left visual field of both eyes. In addition to the lateral geniculate nuclei, some fibres will also branch off towards other nuclei. For example, few fibres branch off the optochiasm and synapse at the suprachiasmatic nucleus in the hypothalamus, which is involved in the control of circadian behavioural rhythms related to sleep-wake cycle. Also, other fibres branch off to the superior colliculi, which is found on the posterior aspect of the midbrain, which will help coordinate rapid eye movements of the eyes. Finally, some optic tract fibres branch off to nuclei of the midbrain that regulate the size of the pupil and coordinate movements of the eyes. So where does the information go from the lateral geniculate nucleus? Well, most of the visual information is relayed to the primary visual cortex, also known as V1, and found on the banks of the calcarine sulcus, demonstrated here by the yellow line. Please be aware that the calcarine sulcus is usually only seen on the medial aspect of the brain, but for the purpose of this demonstration, I will be demonstrating this on the lateral aspect of the brain. So information gets transmitted from the lateral geniculate nucleus to V1 via optic radiations, and these optic radiations can be divided into an upper division and a lower division. The upper division projects to the upper bank of the calcarine sulcus, called the cuneus, like this and this contains input from the superior retinal quadrants, which, as we remember from before, represents the inferior quadrants of the visual field. The lower division projects from the lateral geniculate nucleus anteriorly into the temporal lobe, where it then loops round the inferior horns of the lateral ventricles before extending posteriorly to the lower bank of the calcarine sulcus, also known as the lingual gyrus. This contains input from the inferior retinal quadrants, which represents the superior visual fields. The lower division of the optic radiations is also known as Mayer's loop. So here we have a diagram of the medial aspect of the left hemisphere of the brain. And here we can see, highlighted in red, the calcarine sulcus. Just superior to the calcarine sulcus, we can see the cuneus, and just inferior, we can see the lingual gyrus. It is also good to note that topographically, the visual information from the fovea, and as we remember from before, has a very high density of cone cells in the retina that allows us to have a very high visual acuity at the center of our vision, is represented on the posterior part of the visual cortex, found in this region here. Whereas the peripheral parts of the retina are found more anteriorly here. It is also good to remember that the fovea is represented by an especially large part of the visual cortex in comparison to the region of the retina it occupies, and this is because it requires more, more visual processing. So what happens to the visual information after V1? Well information from V1 projects to other areas of the cerebral cortex for more complex visual perception, the first of which is the dorsal stream also known as the vision for action stream. This involves projections to the parietal lobe and this system is involved in locating targets, executing motor functions and analysing movement. Lesions in this region causes a condition whereby the individual can't see moving things and effectively sees movement as a series of photos. This condition is called akinotopsia. We then have another system, this is the temporal stream, also known as the vision for perception stream. Now this involves projections to the inferior parts of the temporal lobe, and this system is responsible for high resolution vision in addition to object and facial recognition. An injury in this area will cause a condition called visual agnosia. An individual with this problem will be able to see objects but not be able to interpret or recognise them. So this finally completes the visual pathway. I hope this has helped with your understanding. I'll be doing another video on the lesions of the visual pathway which will be a great way for you to test yourself on the stuff that we have learnt today.
So please subscribe to Sot and Brain Hub if you haven't already and visit our Facebook page. Thank you. Subscribe to Sot and Brain Hub for more videos to help explain the mysteries of the brain.